And that camera is, they use like an iPad or something like that. And what that does is it reflects the the broadcast, yeah. the show broadcast up onto the monitor. So it looks like I'm looking at you right now because my okay. camera is directly behind this mirror window. So it actually, uh, it, it works. It, you know, it totally works. Um, yeah. But uh, it's, uh, yeah, I'm not expecting to do that. I was just noticing because uh, on your right side of your face during the, the podcast, there was a little bit of like color shifting. I don't know if that was the camera or if that was something on your monitor, like uh, some kind of going back and forth between something white on the screen and then something colored on the screen. But like right now it's fine, but it was, it was kind of, not flickering, but it would be on like like a colored light, and then it would be off again, and then it would be back on again. So yeah, I'm not sure whether my little light ring, <clears throat> our rabbits got into the room a while back, and my cord. Uh, nobody, they're not supposed to get up in here. And uh, <laughs> my daughter Katie's watching me say that. And, um, <laughs> they got in, and though they don't chew, well, this one doesn't chew supposedly. And needless to say, the uh, cord was cut in half. So I spliced it together, <laughs> and it hadn't been much of an issue. But I do know that I probably need to go back and do a better splice job because sometimes I do notice that light seems to flicker some. So maybe if I jostle when I was maybe moving some of the jars, just yeah. like there, it just kind of changed there. Yeah, okay, so, so that's what it is. Jars. Yeah, That's what it is, okay. Because I'm noticing it too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so... I'll have to try to uh, do a little bit better job from a standpoint of getting my coloration even. <laughs> it wasn't, I, I just noticed it because I noticed those things, but you know, yeah, it's, it, it, it's been working so far. It was just today, the first time I noticed it, but yeah. Um, well, yeah. it's like, you, you know, you kind of like a lot of things when you troubleshoot the things of the plan or something, Yeah, you, know, you, you, you have a several things you look at and then you, you start knocking off the the easy things, and so right. or the more pain in the butt things, and so you get to the point, and then it's kind of like, well, yeah, this could be a little bit better if this was, you know, so what's causing that? Right. So I can see if I can fix that, and if it if that works, then fine. If not, I can look into something that's maybe a little more uh, stable uh, and and far enough off the ground that if the rabbits get in here, they don't chew it up or just expose the lead a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so they bite into it. <laughs> yeah. You got shocked yeah. rabbit. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's uh that's that's been an issue of having indoor rabbits. Now they're good for the melee talk because their droppings are actually one of the things that are really good for uh that plant. So oh. it's kind of a symbiotic relationship, I guess is the right way to look at it. And we feed them good stuff, and then they give me good stuff, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> and I put it out on the Melitol vine, so. They, they give you good stuff, and then they chew through your wiring. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the furniture and stuff, so. <laughs> anyway, I'll say, well, I, uh, I'll refrain from saying anything that may get me, uh, <laughs> incriminate me in any way, if anything ever happened to them. Is she watching you talk to me on the. No, they were just oh. in the other room, and there's no separation. Oh. So, oh, okay. if they're paying attention, um, or they might be one of these other two uh, eyeballs looking at us. For all we know, we got teenage girls. They could give a rat's ass about us. Yeah, well, mine doesn't care. Well, hopefully no. one day, like you said, I think we 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 talked about going through the stages of you moving away. Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of times, even with my parents, you know, my dad, I guess he either thought they'd always end up back in New Orleans or something, but no. you know, when you grow up around something and you take it for granted, not in a bad way, it's just that, you know, that's the norm. Yeah. You know, getting inexpensive boiled crabs on a Friday or boiled shrimp, uh, that could feed a family of 12 or five yep. or whatever it was. Um, it's a luxury then, now. Or, yeah, you know, and then you go over there and and then you move out of town and then you 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 know, you have a hankering or an all V as they say out in Cajun country for it. And and then you look around and you know, if you're where you're at, 
it's probably oh, slim yeah. to none or you get a, a variety that's similar but different but you probably don't have the prices hell i'm sure the prices no. in new orleans now aren't what they were 50 years i mean comparable if you did a uh extrapolated a, a uh cost of living increase mm-hmm. it probably is not the same um and you know i understand that because the, the 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 merchants who people up in maryland and all that want those blue crabs and so you know you can't fi- uh fault the people who are doing that for a living to make good money off of it right um, so unless you do it yourself or you know somebody who can help get you a deal uh but yeah those type of things that anyway you know you move away we did have a lot of red beans and rice growing up because uh camellia as we talked about in the first episode or the first one i was involved with right uh was um pretty ubiquitous even back then and uh they're all over the place yeah they were like 50 they were maybe that was like maybe their 50th anniversary thereabouts yeah so they were you know we were and i grew up in for people don't know uh up in houston and some in dallas so we could get that and now and we had great tex-mex and you know it's just kind of depending upon what you're trying to preserve or or uh, live right uh, as part of your diet but anyway yeah so i think a lot of times you you don't realize what you have until you don't have it anymore until you don't have it anymore yep <clears throat> that's definitely true yeah up here it's uh it's different in the sense that uh <clears throat> we what we have access to in terms of seafood is it's its own it's a pacific northwest seafood right so right oysters are smaller um the what's the name of that japanese oyster kumado yeah kumado uh an olives kumado oysters <laughs> <laughs> it's got the olives on the brain um yeah. and then uh I think we talked about this. The crab meat is all Dungeness, and Dungeness yeah. is not not what I want, you know. And yeah. that that, and coupled with the fact that there's so many people that live up here who think that Old Bay is okay, and yeah. you know, it's like, ah, come on, man, you, you know, you can do better than that. But um, you know, people, that's part of the show is to educate people on alternatives to what they're used to. And hopefully some people are willing to take the plunge and push the boundaries and get outside their comfort zone a little bit with the things that we're introducing them to. I mean, that, that, that can always be the hope. Um, what I've noticed though, is that there's any, it's like, a uh, like a ship that's, that's going down. Like you plug one hole it's like a cartoon. Yeah. You know, plug one hole and then another one pops open and you plug that one. And pretty soon, you know, every extremity on your body is covering all these little holes. Yeah. And so no matter how much I try to um, educate people, it, it's always <clears throat> an ongoing battle. Because... Yeah. They're, they're, it, even the chefs here, man, if I could get some just a handful of restaurants to pick up the Buscoli brand and integrate it yeah. into their dishes, game changer, man. Total game changer. Oh, yeah. they, they would, they would, uh, they'd be able to offer something that no other restaurant is doing right. in, in, uh, in Seattle or anywhere. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, it's getting them to that point. And, uh, yeah. You know, that was part of one of the things that I'd, I'd always been thinking about was having like a wholesale business where I sold just to restaurants um, and I would yeah. source things like olive salad, grits, you know, things that are dry goods and and yeah. not really so much like the, the stuff that was perishable. Um, right. But, but uh, you know, the, there was a commercial here. Oh God! It was for a local grocery chain called Fred Meyer, which is part of the Kroger chains. Which I don't know if they have Kroger out there, but um, oh, they had them in Texas when I was growing up. Yeah, so um, they were talking about you know prepare now for your holiday gatherings and 
you know, and they made, they said something like, uh, and don't forget to make your Cajun ravioli or something like that. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Cajun ravi? Look, yeah, you got to stop sprinkling Cajun yeah. seasoning. First of all, Cajun seasoning is not just the plain Cajun seasoning that you get from McCormick's. Secondly, right. there's so many different flavorings that you can get. And I mean, you know, you have, we have Tony Sachery to thank, thank for at least pushing boundaries a bit and and introducing people's alternatives to what I don't know who came up with the idea that we're going to take some cayenne and some paprika and, and a few other things and put them to onion powder and garlic powder and then call that Cajun seasoning. I, I, I don't know who did it. Um, I but, have a story that I can tell you that uh, somebody told me about that. Okay, go and for it, it. And it's credited to Tony Sacheries. <clears throat> so oh, really? The guy I know. What was that? Oh, really? It was yeah. t- credited to Tony Sachery? Yeah, so, I mean, if you if you go back to his history, he was a, I think like an insurance salesman. I mean, I think he did a lot of things. But probably late 60s, early 70s, I believe, he was credited with... Uh, you know, he actually what you find first is a Cajun cookbook that he put out in like 1972. And oh, wow. uh, so that yeah. was one of the early things that you really don't expect to see uh, that specialized back then. Right. But they said that uh, this guy, my friend Cappy, he lives in Vashery, but he's originally from one of the like St. Mary or St. Landry Parish. Can't remember which one it was. But he said growing up, uh, he's about 10 years older than me, that Tony Sachery would conveniently call on all the uh the places and, and if people don't realize tony sashry was a real person and <laughs> right. uh, a real man and so he ended up uh conveniently calling and this is the way i was told the story conveniently calling as you know people were cooking uh and so what would happen is that like when they would go out to the camp uh on the weekends so uh, you know hopefully people understand that concept most of the people in the mid 20th century south louisiana by that time had really kind of migrated if you were doing a uh, a town or a city job you lived in the suburbs or in some house but oftentimes they had a place a camp on the bayous or the right. uh, swamps uh raised uh, uh pilings and yep. uh you know it wasn't anything fancy it's just you get your boat out there you get away from everybody yep and that's where you get one on the weekend you hunt and fished. And, uh, so he said that what the story was that he was told is that the people would, instead of taking a box of salt, a box of pepper, a box of granulated garlic, they would just simply say, you know what, I'm just going to put some in this jar here. Uh, they, and they basically figured they would just mix a okay. certain amount. And so you ended up with a jar of, a mixed combination of these seasonings uh, and spices okay. to the, uh, the owner or the family's preference. And so he ended up kind of after sampling a lot of different ones from different people, he kind of came up upon his own uh, recipe. And that's actually the first recipe that you will find in his cookbook is to make that seasoning. And then, huh. you know, once, didn't know that. once you do that, yeah, so once you do that, and I've got a, I got a, I don't know if it's a first edition. I got a 1972 edition. But if you look online, you can find the original recipe. And uh, let's say it's 32 parts or 32 tablespoons or teaspoons of ingredients. Yeah. 28 of those is going to be salt. And then maybe one is maybe MSG or something like that. Right. right. Um, so when people say that it's, you know, it's salty, and there's a reason because yeah, it is, the, the, <laughs> it is. Yeah. But so the point being is that that was kind of the thing. And, and then what ended up happening is that the re- recipes look pretty good. It's a really good book actually. Um, but you can look at it and it references back, you know, one tablespoon of, of Cajun seasoning, or I can't remember exactly what it's called. I'll, I'll take a picture of it and send it to you. But the, it became that, you know, the people just enjoyed that mixture, especially if you were outside the area or didn't have a, a recipe for the family, 
and, and just like these olive salads. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of people will tell tell you that they're, uh, you know, especially if you're Sicilian or Italian, you know, my family's got a recipe that they've been using for a hundred plus years. Right. And uh, it's better than this. Uh, okay. You know, I think the, uh, the owner, uh, the founder or the, he, I heard an interview with him and he says, you know, he's, he doesn't argue with anybody's grandma or, uh, or mother's recipe. Um, but at the same time, you know, they've got a very good recipe that was in their family and it, and it, works out for a lot of people that you can use that in lieu of, uh, if you don't want to make it your right. own. Right. And so that's to be the same thing with the Tony Sasher is that it ended up getting to be, it, it became more convenient. So you didn't have to worry about mixing it every time or mixing up a big batch. Right. And, uh, and so it took off. And like you said, nowadays, I'm sure there's a number. There's probably like a counter out there that has how many Cajun Creole seasonings that are hitting the market. And I wouldn't be surprised if it increasingly goes up every day or if, if not every hour. And they're all just variations on that original base. Seems like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I've had the stale cracker. What does he call it? Is it t- Cajun two, sp- two step? Two step. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then um, I've had, uh, of course, Tony's. I've had Slappy Mama. I've had uh, yeah. the Cajun Ninja. You know, I yeah. there's a lot out there, and and some of it is really good, and then some of it's just like, well, it's nothing really to write home about. You know, it's just yeah. it's like anything else. And uh, I am far more sensitive to salt than I was when I first started on my culinary journey um and my body is too so uh (laughs) (laughs) um you know i i I gotta be careful about that kind of stuff so i i appreciate when i see like the low sodium versions they are not as um intense in flavor but right that's because the the sharpness of the sodium that that thing that enhances the flavor of the food that you're putting it on is reduced and and it's balanced yeah. out with natural ingredients you know um whatever the garlic powder the onion powder granulated yeah. granulated garlic paprika all that stuff and none of that really has that much salt con- i mean i tasted i don't know why i did this i tasted granulated garlic one day and i was just like Okay, no, this needs to be blended. This is not, you know, a standalone thing. Yeah. And uh, we use it, we, we actually have a uh, a buffalo sauce that we made in the restaurant that utilizes uh, some of the granulated garlic, of course, onion powder. But, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it was... The, the I guess going back to my original point is that there's just or, or your original point about the ingredient selection. Yeah, I mean it's it's totally changed. I mean, it, it, in some ways it's gotten better. Certainly from a dry goods yeah. standpoint, it's gotten better. But you know, <clears throat> there's a guy right now that Uncle Dennis uses to get his boot in, and that yeah. guy <clears throat> he goes to Slidell. On Thursday nights, he goes somewhere else on Friday nights, and that's the only way you can get his boot in. That's it. Yeah. Right. And it quite literally delivers out of his truck. You know, he parks somewhere yeah. and then he just doles it out. So you buy it ahead of time, and then you know. But anyway, the the, the having access to that kind of boot in, Dennis, uh, you know, he swears by it. He says that yeah. it's better than best stop um which i mean you know okay fine uh, m- maybe that's the case uh i guess everybody's tastes are what they are but but you know at least best stops have been able to take boudin really kind of mainstream and it's not yeah. out of somebody's uh yeah. trunk of their car you know but i have a friend i uh, worked with uh brianna and she grew up in new orleans and she moved to mobile and we talked and that was one of the comments is that, uh, you know, she's had jambalaya, for example, someplace 
Yeah. And she goes, you know, once you've had good jambalaya, you know what good jambalaya is. Yeah. And that's the same thing. Once you've had good boudin, once you've had good olive salad, um, or even seasoned Cajun foods, you know what that is. And, yeah. um, and then like I said, I don't think it's so much a, somewhat as it is a compromise, say for example, if you can get best stop. Now, yeah, having made boudin and telling you that I can make 12, 13 pounds after a 12, 13 day, I mean, 12, 13 hour day, mm-hmm. uh, making it from scratch. And the thing about it, like I tell you, people at the plant all the time telling me, um, and why don't you make us some boudin? And I'm like, hell, I'd make that in 12, 13 hours and it would be gone in 12 minutes <laughs> right. uh, with, with people eating it. And, and maybe they may not even like it as much as they like some others, but, um, and so just from a, a standpoint of, uh, and that's the other thing that um, those guys, like you were talking about that Dennis uses and a friend, uh, Lester Fulce is Vachery at Le Bon Boucan. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got this little, like I said, if you, when you ever get to make, get a chance to make it down there, we'll have to go down there and visit him because it was a little old house that became a bakery. And he, he did think he was a, uh, chemical plant operator. He was a truck driver and I think he got to be about 60 or so, but he had been saving. He had a family recipe. He acquired a lot of the equipment that he needed to do a full-time smokehouse. And he opened it up in this little back road of Vashery. Mm -hmm. And he told me that uh, within a couple of months, he had made all of his investment back because he was doing it the old way that the folks in Vashery do it. Right. And they, they just couldn't get enough of it. And then you get to, like I said, you get to a certain age, you get in your seventies or so, and you know, you might make a, a batch or a pound or, and if he's got it and his hogshead cheese and all this other stuff, I mean, heck it's, it's either just as close to your recipe or if not the same or better. Right. And, you know, and so they've got that. And, um, but if you don't have that, these other brands are, are pretty good, you know, yeah. If you give if you give him a, a hundred or as an ideal, you know, maybe they're ninety. But you know, that's still a pretty good grade in my book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, <clears throat> we're just I, I think uh I, I look at this as a multi phase process, right? The first is the education, the second is the sourcing, and then the third is the actual um uh <clears throat> what's the right word um cultivation uh continued cultivation of the foods that we know and appreciate and because it will be you know an ongoing battle it it really will be because outside of new orleans nobody could really give a shit what kind of stuff goes on their muffalata if even if they eat a muffalata they they could care right. less and so yeah. You know, my, my, like I said in my intro, I said, you know, my mission is to introduce people to the food and the culture of, you know, a place I still call home. And, yeah. and that's, and that is true. I mean, that's very much what my mission is now. And, and, you know, it's, it's actually kind of interesting because it's, com- it's completely and wholly different from anything I've ever done in my life. Yeah. But <clears throat> I think that the preservation of, what is unique to our upbringing, our culture, um, is something that is worth trying to go after and and trying to achieve. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just happy and, you're and along that, for the ride, man. Oh, well, I'm happy to be along for the ride, and I'm glad that, like I said, uh, I think sometimes, you know, and and this is not fault in any of our relatives that they're still fortunately living in Louisiana. You know, uh, you don't may not feel like you have to take up that mission and that mantle to right. defend it because of the fact that you have those things still right. while you're lucky to have them. Right. Um, you know, but to our, our discussion, like about Tony Sasheries, if you are a well-known cook in your uh, circles and because all you do is use Tony Sasheries, what happens one day if, you know, heaven forbid that the company folds? or decides right. to do something different. And all you've built your repertoire upon was using Tony Sacheries as your base seasoning, Yep. you know, and nothing. And if you haven't evolved beyond understanding what that, what those that's based on, 
then you can never replicate it. Or maybe it's not even that bad. Maybe it's you have these family recipes that, you know, your grandmother made and you try to replicate it. And, you know, think of the variability, whether you're the tomatoes or the, the seafood was maybe it was particularly you had a, a, a drought one year. And so maybe the, the seafood was more salty or right. less salty. I mean, there's all kind of things that play into what the flavors will come across. And um, and so some of those things, it's just that you almost have to draw a line in the sand and try to capture it as best you can. So people will know these kind of th- kind of things affect it. And, uh, you know, to what the standard is, you want to call it. Um, and you're right. There's a lot of things you, you, you go and you see a muffalata somewhere and they use pet tapenada instead of olive salad. Um, yeah. you know, and it's, and, and they use some other type of, uh, deli meats, uh, yeah. bologna or something and, and put it on a hot dog bun. And, you know, it's like, that's crap. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, I'm like I said, that's, uh, I think that you and I, because of our, uh, uh, life experiences of the last 20, 30 years have been able to see that, you know, that's why you appreciate it. And I appreciate it when we get over there because you get the real thing. Right. And, and even if it's the, you know, all the, you see all the things with the, uh, the travel channels and all the Facebook postings of people saying, uh, where do the locals go? Or, you know, I want a little hole in the wall where I can hear jazz coming from the streets right? and, uh, you know, the rain to coming down and all the stuff like that's all this magical Louisiana, uh, right. Come coming across, but you know, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, but then everybody's trying to play into that. Right. And so, you know, you, that authenticity starts to get skewed as well, unless, you know, somebody's going back and saying, this is what it used to be like. It's not using this instead. Right. Right. Uh, my little soapbox there. No, that's all good, man. This is what this, uh, this is what this, uh, this segment is for is just to kind of, you can yeah. get up on your soapbox and stand there all, all afternoon long. I don't care, but you can't because you got to get going. You're, uh, you had a three o'clock cutoff time. Yeah. I- I'm good for about another 15 minutes actually. Okay. If, you, right. if you're good. Yeah, but, um, I'm just I ran out of crackers, but other than that, <laughs> <laughs> like you, I have a spoon. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I am, uh, I am, uh, you know, this is what's left of uh, the dip. The dip, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's funny. Yeah, I use the same type of uh, container there uh, that got mine, in, and I'm holding back just because I'm hoping my daughters will try it uh, because they haven't developed the taste for olive salad yet. But I think in this form with like you talked about it earlier in the episode is that uh, I wouldn't say it's more palatable. It's maybe a more approachable if you're afraid of olives. Sure. Uh, for whatever reason. And so, um, I mean, and, and you didn't even, I mean, not you, but we didn't even touch on some of the other things they talked about. Oh, that reminded me actually this morning. So they've got like, you know, this thing has like a vegetarian. Yeah, uh, I saw that. Panini. Mm-hmm. Um, marinated seafood salad, bruschetta biscotti, bisco- yep. like you were talking about. Yep. Even when we did the uh, just the, the muffalata recipe, tuna salad that's supposedly actually pretty good mixed together. Yep. And so there's all these type of things that I would not have necessarily thought of, but the thing I thought about after making the dip is that I had drained all the olive uh, olive oil from the yeah. olive salad. And it's, it's not just like you were talking one time, it's not just the olives. It's kind of, um, I guess kind of like maybe the, the martini mix makes it dirty. It's yeah. got the olive juices mixed with the olive oil. Yep. And so I think for, for a lot of times I've kind of thrown it away cause it just was too much extra oil, but with their blend and it not being too salty to me, I would almost save some of that oil and put it back. And I'm thinking now next time I need to saute something, uh, some vegetables or some meats or something yeah. that I want to have kind of that twist on it. I might just save some of that oil and use that. That's uh, that's what I did today. I, I drained. Yeah. yeah. I actually drained it and I just put it right back in the jar. What was yeah, left. So, too. um, cause I mean, it's like that stuff is, it's good. It's, um, you know, I, I was, 
it wasn't until I heard that you know, basically there's Crisco in there in addition to olive oil um, mm-hmm. that it all kind of clicked for me. It's like, okay, that's why it's kind of slippery, I guess is the best, yeah. best way to put it. And, and uh, <clears throat> that, that's a, a unique kind of uh well, it's a unique flavor, of course, because it's not pure olive oil. It's it's yeah. olive oil mixed with, I guess, canola oil. Um, okay. But uh, canola oil has um, a was it is it a high smoke point? I think so. So yeah, it it may not be as high as like a peanut or a vegetable, but. It's still something that you can cook with, uh, right? Maybe higher. It's probably higher than olive oil. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Be. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm getting at it. So if you're yeah. sautéing mm-hmm. some jalapeno or or any of the olive salads, sautéing the uh, something with that uh, with one of these olive salads in there, you're yeah. not going to burn anything, right? It's uh, yeah. I I know it's funny. I have this. Uh, this uh, electric wok that I bought for Reiko mm-hmm. about 10 years ago. Yeah. It has never left the box. <laughs> so that was a swing and a miss on a present for her. Um, of course, we were just getting to know each other back then. So I, you know, I can, yeah. I can clean ignorance. I learned a long time ago, you never buy a woman underwear. Just don't do it. It's, it's, you know, <laughs> it's, but, um, yeah, because, well, anyway, it's a whole nother or a walk. <laughs> or apparently, or a walk. And then I'm thinking, oh my God, you know, uh, nowadays I'm looking back at that going, that's kind of, I mean, everybody's so sensitive to cultural appropriation and racism and shit like that. But I don't think she took it that way. But you now, in retrospect, I'm kind of thinking, Oh, well, you're Japanese. You know how to use one of these. You know, it wasn't that. I wasn't thinking that. Yeah. But um, but I was thinking, you know, for stir-frying stuff, you know, would also be a good um, pasta would be uh, bow tie pasta yeah. Oh, yeah. For, for this. Um, I talked to Reiko about doing a uh, a pot sticker. A Japanese style okay. pot sticker because they've got, he's got like the epinata, uh, mm-hmm. it's on the website, so it looks like a Nagadoshi's uh, meat okay. pie, right? Yeah, but it's filled with the olive salad, That's and yeah, and I thought, hmm, I don't want to do pie crust or any of that crap, uh, I don't want to have to yeah. fold anything. And you know, Rego can she can bang out you know a couple plates worth of handmade, um pot stickers and i so i asked her i said do you think we could put the olive salad in these pot stickers and then do like some kind of soy sauce vinegar maybe a little bit of cayenne blend dipping sauce for for this and her assessment was that there's too much fat that would um in a in a high heat situation would start to boil and it would uh, okay i see it would bust open the shell because the shells that are used for the like japanese style pot mm-hmm. stickers they call them gyoza um the 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 shell is really thin yeah. and um like paper thin and if you uh puncture it in any way you've just ruined your oil Right, your your cooking oil. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because you had me thinking there that uh, you know, could you make it into an egg roll or a sure. spring roll? But the spring roll to me would be just what you're describing. It'd be it's so a bit thin. thicker though. The yeah. spring rolls are a bit thicker. So, yeah, and you know, you don't have to put it in a deep fry. You could put it in an air fryer, theoretically. Now, yeah, yeah, right. So yeah. I may do it on the down low, not, not you know, kind of circumvent because I, I would I would love to try that because I love those things. And I think yeah. the challenge there would be 
um, the dipping sauce. You know, the yeah. and, and one of the things that I like about some of the Japanese dish, dipping sauces is that they put um, sesame seeds inside the dipping sauce. Yeah. So you you make your sauce, which is uh, predominantly soy sauce, and then some um, rice vinegar, and then um, in this case, you would put sesame seeds, mm-hmm. and they would just kind of float on the sauce yeah. and then you dip in your you know japanese muffle out of you know yeah. pot sticker thing um because we tried to do it with gumbo we actually tried to make like a chicken sausage pot sticker like gumbo pot okay. sticker didn't work yeah. it didn't work but then we didn't really give it that much effort we tried once yeah. and it's they just popped all over the place and it's like Okay, well, I have to dump all this oil now, or filter it, and then you know reuse it, or however we ended up doing it. But yeah, yeah it was a, if you're uh, doing it in the restaurant scale, it becomes more. It's one thing if it's a messy experiment at the house, but if you, yeah, if you take it to the the kitchen level, then it's a lot worse. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't even bother with that. Yeah, we yeah. we always tried something at home first before we ever took it yeah. large scale. Uh, when you're talking about the dipping sauce, it reminded me of my dad when he would travel to Japan. Uh, and I don't remember, he's probably went a do- dozen times and some of the things he enjoyed, like the, the, the beef and, and those type of, what's, what do they call the, uh, the hot broths and stuff that you would oh, like, like cook. No, you're not talking about ramen, right? No, like, no, no. They'd have like the raw meats and stuff and the vegetables. Oh, you, you know, you, sukiyaki is that's okay. probably where you had the okay. broth and then the meat kind of stewing in it and it would. Yeah, and then you'd either yeah. pick it up or you'd boil it, put the, the meat into a hot broth and cook it right. And right. to your liking. But he'd say sometimes these people, uh, some of his uh, folks who were entertaining him when he'd visit would bring him to certain places. <clears throat> and there were certain things that he didn't care to eat, certain things from the sea. Right. And so he, he, would, <laughs> he, he said he developed a system that because they had all these dipping sauces there, is that he'd use the chopstick. I guess they use chopsticks. I think it was chopsticks, he said. And he'd go ahead and he'd grab it and he'd go into the, the dipping sauce and he'd make a motion and he'd leave it in there and just bring it to his mouth like he was eating it. And uh, so, he, <laughs> but then, you know, he ate a lot of rice and, and, and sake and, uh, and some of the things that he knew that he enjoyed. But he said he, that was his little patented technique that he would do just to, to, to get by at some of those meals. <laughs> so they, whoever was picking up probably saw what the hell's all this in this dipping sauce. <laughs> there, there's a, there's actually some, uh, not to get too far off track, but there's, there's a couple of, uh, uh, vloggers, um, in, uh, in Japan that are, you know, I think most of them are British, but I think there's a couple of Americans and they talk about life in Japan and, and things like that. And, uh, <clears throat> my words of wisdom is for anybody that is traveling to Japan for the first time, um, if they put a food in front of you and say it's going to give you stamina, uh, run away. Um, because there's generally a body part or something that you would probably never put inside you. Um, yeah. I, I've been, I've been, I've had live peeled shrimp so imagine being skinned and tossed on a plate and then somebody eats you while you're still alive that's what i was expected to eat and i was just like i know i can't do this man this is yeah. and then the other thing is if they try and get you to eat green tea ice cream it's a joke they it's a it's a big old pile of wasabi and oh, <laughs> and you imagine taking a spoonful of that oh, yeah you're uh you're you're hurting so, um, yeah, but it's not good at all. Okay. No, but I mean, I, yeah, I had the same experience. I used to commute monthly yeah. to Japan yeah. and, um, after a while I figured out what places I could go to and what places I needed. It, it was always the places that were fancy or the ones that I couldn't go to, you know, because they, yeah. uh, I went to one place, it was a blowfish, you know, like, and, oh, wow. and, yeah, and they have to have special licenses to yeah. uh, serve that because of the poison inside yeah. the blowfish, and uh, it numbed my tongue. 
the meat yeah. on my oh, tongue. Wow. Yeah. So it's a neurological wow. something or other, but yeah, anyway. toxin of some sort. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It'll paralyze you. But, um, uh, the other thing with dipping sauces is that the other thing with olive oil, like you're talking about here, is you know in the Italian restaurants that they that you go to, I know for a while they give you the the Italian breads or or uh, what do they call it, um, crostinis or something like that that are mm-hmm. the, the, to dip into. And I mean, right. instead of just dip and just dipping like an extra virgin or something, yep. to me, you could just save that and use that to dip into uh, after the olives are gone. Sure, sure. Yeah, I wouldn't give away olive salad as part of a, like a freebie at a restaurant. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Uh, no, no. But, uh, yeah, I mean, and what, whatever was left over for sure. I mean, that yeah. certainly would add a lot more flavor. That's why they put the, uh, what is it? The red wine vinegar in there too, yeah. to, to kind of cut it a little bit, but yeah. All right, man. But well, um, I've enjoyed the look of, I have definitely learned a, uh, a lot about these other two products that they already had yeah. and, uh, and would not hesitate to buy them. Um, yeah. And uh, the other thing, like I said, I'm looking forward to next week because we got the other got three. Some, got some wild stuff yeah. next week. Yeah, so I don't know if you tease or want to tease anybody as far as who's watch, but it's got it's made by Boscoli, right? But it's got a different name. Yep, yep. So yeah, that's that's their crew line, and I I take this as like kind of like their uh, like. Uh, the military's uh, black ops. This is kind okay. of their black ops, you know, where yeah. they they uh, they try some pretty off the wall uh, experiments. And um, so, I, my understanding is is that the the two two of the three because one is just the muffalata. But I'll be really curious. Yeah. We should do a side by side with their regular t- Italian. Olive salad. Yeah, I was wondering about that too. Yeah, we should do a side by side on that and see what difference there is, there is. But the other two being seasoned with pepper, um, uh, I, I'd really like to get their feedback prior to the show. Yeah. To get some ideas for how they would use them, because yeah, I could definitely see, for instance, the the ghost being uh, married with. Uh, cream cheese i mean just yeah but but i'm also thinking nachos nachos with uh the you know like the chipotle the chipotle uh olive salad on top of nachos so you get this kind of smoky smoky heat um i can't wait to try that one yeah yeah so So you had also talked to them right you did an interview with them no i'm trying to get them to to do an interview yeah so there, uh, Matt responded last week. I guess there's a, they're discussing internally if there's anybody that they're willing to uh, put on camera as a representative. <laughs> <laughs> they're all taking this very seriously, which is fine. I mean, you know, it, it is your product. So you're, but I mean, you know, you know us, we're lighthearted. We're not going to, oh, yeah. this is not a, you know, I'm going to tear you a new one style interview. Yeah. You know, this isn't a, uh, you know, an inquisition. This is really um, having somebody who was responsible for developing the product to, yeah. uh, to you know, explain to us what was the concept, what was the idea for doing these and and what flavors... Do you see them being paired with what? What, do you, what would you marry them with? And that, you know, those kind. Uh, again, um, the Chipotle one. W- you you make a spread like we did with the dip today, and then you put that on a jalapeno Asiago bagel. Yeah. Right, and you know you've got so you got some really intense, unique flavors that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's 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 all kinds of ideas, and and some of them, I don't know, some of them work will work, and some won't. But I, but it would be cool to have them on to, um, uh, kind of guide us. 
you know, yeah. a little bit. Otherwise, we're just going to be like, you, yeah, you know. You said they gave you a hint also, on, or a suggestion, I should say, um, with that and another condiment to the, the muffalata. Uh, you said mayonnaise. Yes. Yes. Thanks for reminding me on that. Yeah. Um, I mean, shit, it doesn't, doesn't hurt to try. Yeah. Right. You know, um, we've got that, we get this Japanese mayo, it's called Kewpie. That's actually, yeah, I've seen it over here. yeah Q, but you got to get the one that's made in Japan, not the one that's made in California. Cause they have okay. the one in California is actually measured out in ounces. Whereas the one from Japan is measured out in milliliters. Um, so yeah. you can, you can tell, but the one from Japan has the original flavor. Uh, it's not, uh, domesticated i guess the best way to put it yeah. but um yeah i i had given that some thought I'm like hmm that might be you look if you do it at a small scale like a little bagel <clears throat> sure yeah. i mean what do you got to lose except some deli meat you know yeah. <laughs> it's that's uh that's the extent of it but i mean i uh, I just uh, I don't there. What it wasn't discussed is: Do you toast it? Do you not toast it? The, if you do toast yeah. it, what kind of flavor profile is that um, creating as a result of toasting the mayonnaise? Because uh, right. like you don't toast mayo like when you do like a roast beef po' boy. That's yeah. added after the fact, right? That's one of the last things you put on there. So <clears throat> yeah, I that's mean, interesting good point. Yeah, so putting it cold on there might make more sense. Yeah. Might. I don't know. Yeah. But, I mean, this is the fun part. You get to experiment this way. So Yeah. I, uh, I think you and I, just in this last hour, hour and a half, or two hours almost, with the, uh, have come up with a lot of different things that we could try with, or people could try. It would be interesting to hear if anybody else has tried other things and could comment and let us oh, know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what else you know you would use these products on um because like i said i can good and bad maybe the, the good part is from a uh added repertoire of dishes to make i could see buying a lot more of these bad for my waistline <laughs> <laughs> and maybe my cholesterol not cholesterol well, my blood pressure maybe with salt right maybe uh like i said it's not as salty as others so no um, everything in moderation yeah yeah and yeah you're absolutely right i think uh after we do next week's show we'll we'll put a a poll up on youtube youtube still allows polls the reason why i didn't do it on facebook is because facebook does not allow polls anymore yeah i heard somebody else say that yeah, yeah they and that's another thing their 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 platform for business is a freaking moving target and i'm tired of keeping up with it youtube is like yeah we're all about video content and building a community that's it you know none of this other crap and so they they as long as you don't cross them with copyright infringement and crap like that then uh yeah then you're fine so um it's not to say they couldn't go away but anyway my my point is i i, I would like to do a poll um yeah. it'd be nice you know one day if we were able to have like a like a almost like a you know a, a local offsite tasting type thing where you know they send us like a couple of gallons of this stuff and we you know host like a little tasting party and yeah then then you know you could bring your camera and, and laptop do you have a laptop or are you using a desktop i'm using desktop but i'll probably get a laptop at some okay point. i have an old laptop well regardless it it's it you know it would be kind of cool to get a group yeah. like a tasting panel you know and people yeah. to because we we have a natural bias but then then you have the people who don't have a natural or they have a bias in the opposite direction because they've never been really exposed to this and so yeah. maybe there's um some come to jesus moments for them where they go oh this is actually pretty good but 
yeah. then then again maybe there's not and and that actually helps i think that would help Buscali a bit too because then they could go okay the demographic in this particular market is is uh suited for this product and maybe not this product you know and yeah, yeah but that's maybe a summertime thing so yeah um, hey, we never know what direction this the uh this will take with uh, yeah. this stuff. So. It's true. It's true. Yeah. I mean, and uh, who would have thunk that I was doing a podcast yeah, you know, like a year ago, somebody said, You're gonna be doing a podcast that involves olive salad. I'm like, get the hell out of here. You know. <laughs> oh, and you're gonna be I, doing I with your cousin that you've barely spoken to over the past <laughs> thirty years. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, other than me doing some stuff where I talk to some people on radio, mostly about gardening or some more Cajun stuff, you know, I wouldn't have thought I'd been doing a, a podcast either. So it's, right. uh, like I said, it's a good opportunity. And, um, and this, like I said, I can't wait to try a lot of these other things because sometimes I just don't have the reason to try them because I either going to do it from scratch or just uh may not have really thought about like sure. i said jalapeno olive salad to me did not sound any like anything i would want to try right now that i try it i could say you know what i'd i'd buy it again and i'd mm -hmm. uh I, if i didn't put it on a muffle lot i'd put it on something else or come sure. to other uses so, yeah yeah i'm glad about that yeah so so discovery process for you too yeah huh, so. all right no. all right man we'll go do your thing uh, all right we will talk as we normally do uh, yeah. over the week and kind of hash out what we're, what uh, kind of fun stuff we're going to bring to people next week. I'm excited about it, but at the same time, I'm like, oh crap, what do we? How do we do this? So um, it remains to be seen, and you're just going to have to tune in next weekend at 11:30 to see us and see us kind of fumble our way through some non-standard. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh olive salads and see how that goes but um, yeah we'll keep sharing uh what we did today and hopefully yeah. get more people interested i think i mean i think at one time we had at least five or more views on it and i didn't have anything on so um i think that's more than i've seen in the last couple of weeks yeah well good every... you know every little bit you know step yeah. by step so yep. uh, we'll see how this new format goes, too. I'll be really curious to see how this goes. But now, now that means that every Saturday after we're done, I have to edit the show <laughs> and run it yeah, through the... You need to not overcreate extra work for yourself. Well, no, but it, it's like if you're going to do it, do it right. And, yeah. and I, before I could just kind of screw off. and, and uh, But if, if this is something that I ever have any hope to make as even a a side hustle um i gotta yeah. do it right so yeah, yeah. okay man have a good weekend right. rest of your weekend and uh, uh still go tigers oh yeah uh, yeah i still got three hours and i'll probably watch it at some point uh yeah my, my guest is gonna be uh our neighbor's an alabama fan so oh god anyway yeah <laughs> don't get him drunk <laughs> otherwise you're gonna have to punch him Nah. <laughs> he's he's like 80. I don't think I should do that. No, it's, yeah, that's a good point. That might that might be a bad look. Um yeah. <laughs> It's not the way I want the podcast to be in the news. Yeah, you'll see <laughs> you'll see me next week in orange or something. Right, like exactly. <laughs> Coming to you live from Alabama State Penitentiary. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that happening. No, we definitely don't want that. Okay, dude. All right. Take care. Take, all right, take care. See ya.